So we're going to look at 2 Kings chapter 6 verses 8 to 23 and consider what we should be intentional in or how what different ways you can be intentional. So beginning in verse 8. Then the king of Assyria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and saved himself there not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore send he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. And it came to pass, when they were come into Samaria, that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha when he saw them, My father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow? Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. And he prepared great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away, and they went to their master. So the bands of Assyria came no more into the land of Israel. So we see here in the at the start here in verse 8 that the king of Syria was prepared to start an intentional war this is obviously not a good intention to come against the people of God and therefore against God himself that all people including yourselves and myself were born into a deadly war God and the devil are after your soul who are you giving yourself to today Does eternal life stand before you or eternal death? The next verse says the man of God, which is Elisha, sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou passed not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. This was God's merciful warning. God allowed his prophet Elisha to give his people an intentional warning. And God gives us an intentional warning in his word telling us that we are headed for hell, but through Jesus Christ we can have eternal life. That's God's intentional warning. Verse 10, the king of Assyria sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once nor twice. So the king of Israel heard Elisha's warning, he listened and engaged in an intentional watching. So he gave heed. There may be many who have heard the warning. They've heard the gospel. They've heard how 
their sin will lead them to hell and how Jesus Christ can save them from their sin. But are they giving heed to that warning? Have they taken action on that warning? Like the king of Israel took action and he watched and he was able to protect his people. Verse 12 says, And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king. So the king of Syria was looking, Who here is against me? Who is for the king of Israel, he says. He's thinking that there's a spy. And they say, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel. Tell it the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. So in a private place, he spoke these words. So Elisha was in a completely different location to the king of Syria. So how did he know his plans? Well, God miraculously revealed him to Elisha. Nothing can be hidden from God. Psalm 139 Verses 1 to 4 says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsetting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Nothing can be hidden from God. So verse 14 says, Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots. The king of Syria is sending all this and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city. This is just for one man. Why would the king of Syria send horses and chariots to fetch one man? Because he wasn't just going against one man. He was going against God. And that's how it is. When the devil, when the darkness, when somebody tries to come against you, when you're living and walking with God, they're not just coming against you, so you need not fear. They're coming against God. So the king of Syria sent all these horses and chariots and a whole great host. In verse 15 it says, And when the servant of the man of God, Elisha, was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host can pass the city, both with horses and chariots. And the servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? So despairing the servant, he's scared. He sees this sight, it looks overwhelming. But Elisha says, Fear not. He says, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. See God for who he is in all his glory and all his power. The first words that Elisha spoke was fear not. Elisha exercised an intentional faith. With God, you are always in the majority. God is bigger than any force on earth. 1 John 4, 4 says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Have you ever, like Elisha's servant, experienced feeling hopeless and like what you face could never be conquered? Maybe you've come to the realization that you're a sinner, but have you seen that God is able to save you? forgive you and change you to be like him. Verse 17, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire about Elisha. Elisha and his servant could both see that the power against them was bigger than themselves, but Elisha saw that it was not bigger than the power of God with them, and nothing ever could be. Verses uh, 1 John 5 verses 4 to 5 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? 
but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Elisha exercised an intentional faith through intentional prayer. Verse 18, And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. Keep praying. Verse 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Pray without ceasing. Verse 18, And when they came down, um, so again, looking at verse 18, these men were struck with physical blindness, but they were already spiritually blind, like so many today. They didn't even know who they were being led by. So Elisha was able to say to them in the next verse, this is not the way, neither is this the city, even though he was right before them. He said, follow me, I'll bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. They didn't even know who they were being led by. And I believe that's like so many today don't even know that they're being led by the devil. Don't even know that they're playing a part in his agendas. They didn't know that who and what they were looking for was right in front of their faces. And I, I pray as you're listening today, you know that the answers and what you're looking for is found in the word of God, is found in Jesus. It's silly to fight God when all he wants is a relationship with you. And as we look at the last verses, it says in 20, verse 21, The king of Israel said to Elisha, he said, Shall we kill them, Elisha? Shall I kill these people now that we have them right here in our, in our land? And Elisha told the king of Israel not to kill them, but to feed them. Give them bread, give them water. He encouraged him to have mercy. The man of God, Elisha, used his influence to encourage the king of Israel to exercise mercy on the Syrians. And God is intentionally merciful towards us and intentionally full of grace towards us. And Elisha intentionally used his influence to encourage the king of Israel to exercise mercy with these people. Do things that you say and do bring evil out of others or bring good? So let's be intentional today. Exercise intentional faith. Heed warning. Be intentionally watching. Be intentionally prayerful and be intentionally merciful.